Let me ask you a question. What did you think of Destiny when it took the gaming world by storm? If you never picked it up or played it, then congratulations. This video and any future Destiny 2 content probably isn't going to matter to you. But if you did take part in the first go around, what did you think of it? For those that don't know, Destiny was a first person shooter with massive multiplayer online elements created by Bungie and published by Activision for a whopping half a billion dollar budget. And believe it or not, that was made up within the first week of its sales alone. I can tell you for as much as I played it, Destiny to me felt like a great time with friends, but at the end of the day was severely lacking in content. I mean, we're talking about Bungie here. They knocked it out of the park for the most part with Halo's storyline. So why did Destiny feel great to control, great to play, look spectacular, and ooze personality, yet lacked one major pillar of game design? Story. I know it's a popular thing to say about this franchise that it's hard to feel anything when it came to Destiny's campaign. It was clear that this time around, gameplay was the main focus and lore definitely took a back seat. It also didn't help that it took nearly three expansion packs to satiate the fan base in terms of additional content, to bare minimum at least completing some semblance of a storyline. So with all of this in mind, this is the important question I'm going to ask you today. Whether you were a casual player, a diehard FPS or MMO fan, or a Bungie and Destiny purist through and through, answer me this question. Did Bungie learn from its mistakes and glaring flaws despite making the most successful brand new IP in years? Well, I'm not sure. See, I logged in about 4 hours to the Destiny 2 beta so far, and I wanted to experience any of the changes from vanilla Destiny all the way up to the end of the Taken King. And here's what I've found so far. The Destiny 2 beta is disappointing. Now before I get crucified in the comments, let me explain my findings. Say what you will about the Destiny franchise in a whole, but the one thing you can't knock it for is its presentation. The visuals, notably the environments and skyboxes, were always a cut above the rest. Jaw-dropping landscapes were immediately gawked at from day one, and it truly shows that Bungie still knows how to flex its artistic muscles. The score still contains those soaring strings that you've come to love, and constant harmonious orchestral swells follow you no matter what you're doing in the game. Even if you're idle, the music still feels and sounds fantastic. Luckily, these are no different in Destiny 2 so far. The game itself looks and sounds like its predecessor, and that's not necessarily a bad thing at all, yet choosing to go with the old engine at a locked 30 frames per second on console was a strange choice in my opinion. Why not up the fi uh, visual fidelity of the series and truly stun with 60 frames per second like many other current gen titles? Maybe this was perhaps due to a limit of their engine or console hardware, but Either way, it's a shame that the PC crowd will most definitely enjoy the visuals, and it might be worth it to try Destiny 2 on a PC just to see how good it looks on Mac settings and tweaking overall settings on a decent tower. But how fun can playing with a super polished turd be if it still plays like a turd? Luckily, Destiny 2 still controls with pinpoint accurate gunplay, fast-paced mobility, and a tight-knit button layout that feels right. It's hard to explain, but Destiny's controls were never a problem, and I think that's a fact a lot of players can agree with to this day. Gunplay was always outstanding, even if you were getting tired of the constant popping in and out of cover, bullet sponge boss battles, it all got tiring to us after a while, but one of the areas Destiny 2 will seem to succeed in is definitely how it feels in your hand. With added evasive maneuvers for each type of Guardian now, new tactics are bound to spring up left and right on the battlefield, and it'll be interesting to see just how much the community will come up with when it comes to creative ways to take down enemies and avoid damage. 
No vehicle sections in the beta, however, so no telling if mounts or sparrows will be back and how they control. Again, looking at Destiny and Destiny 2 from a visual, audio, and gameplay standpoint, the series seemed great in its own right with little to no flaws, and that hasn't changed in Destiny 2 so far. So, in my personal opinion, how did this wildly successful IP earn the infamous title of the greatest 7 out of 10 ever made, or the best mediocre shooter to ever grace consoles and PC? Here's where I'm worried about Destiny 2 in a whole. Of the one story mission we get to play in the beta is about how the entirety of everything we built alongside our fellow guardians in the first title is taken away by a new and vicious cabal overlord. It seems that humanity will have to take a stand with what little technology we possess and end the tyrannical cabal takeover once and for all. Well, besides being a little cliche, I have one major problem with the story thus far. This doesn't feel like a standalone title or a completely new sequel in a whole. I hate to say it, but this feels like Destiny 1.5. So from the very start of the first game to now, our Guardians have had no personality, the cutscenes were far and few in between your story progression, and even when they decided to go a bit lengthier, they were always filled with cryptic metaphors and cheesy scapegoats that allowed the writers to get away with not adding a whole lot of deep storytelling and also stringing the players along one vague statement at a time. That got tiring. The Guardians are good, keep harvesting light to grow your power, the darkness is bad however, and they're here to take all that we've built, only you can stop them blah 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 blah. If you want more story, head over to Bungie.net and read up on countless grimoire logs we didn't put in the game. Who cares if it ruins your immersion, right? Ugh. Now, to counter that point, Bungie devs did state that the story is the focus this time around and it'll be much more in-depth and cinematic. I can definitely appreciate that. I also liked seeing Cade, Akora, and some of the more legendary NPCs for the first time around giving you a hand during the first story mission. That was a very nice touch. But I can't help but feel like that might be forced at this point. Listen, if I'm to care about world building, story progression, and character backstories, it'll take a hell of a lot more than running up to NPCs and holding down square to hear what they have to say. Of course, I'm taking all of this with a grain of salt, but during my beta playtime, much like my first go-around getting a Max Warlock in the first Destiny, I didn't feel anything emotionally. I'm not attached to the universe, I'm not attached to the heroes and villains, hell, even my player character, the very avatar of my emotional and physical dedication to the game, felt more like a tool than a person that I could like at the end of the day. Bungie's really gonna knock it out of the park this time around if they don't want to be lambasted for yet another hollowed and vague narrative in exchange for great gameplay. Now, the one thing that I can say about the wondrous mess that is Destiny is this. During our early gameplay days, it felt like a social revolution. So many of my friends wanted to experience this IP with me and others, the strikes and raids were super fun, the loot grind was addictive as hell, and it felt incredible taking down our first raid boss. I'll never forget when we dropped Atheon. Truly in the MMO sense, Destiny was a drug amongst millions of players, and it proved that even with glaring flaws, ultimately it brought people together to have a good time, and at the end of the day, that's all that you want out of a $60 game. Come September, we'll all find out if Destiny 2 will live up to its hype and deliver on its corrections of past mistakes, or if it's doomed to repeat all the negative aspects players hated the first time around. If it ends up being good, that'll be awesome. If it's not great, hey, there's always going to be Anthem coming up next year that we can all give a shot. But that's a video for another day. Until next time, Guardians, keep your hopes high and your trigger fingers ready. Either way... We're bound for one hell of a ride. 
Hey guys, Burial here again. Thank you so much for watching and putting up with my voice, seeing that I've been sick the last couple of days. But sound off in the comments below if you haven't already. I want to know what your experience has been with the Destiny 2 beta so far. A lot of good things, a lot of bad things. Let me know. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date with some new content coming up on the way. And once again, thanks for watching and have a great day.